Agriculture on the move. 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 Hello again, St. Lucia, and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. I am Philip Sidney, your host. Today, we are talking bananas. And of course, our Banana Expo 2022. But before we delve in the program, just let me give you a little background to where we are. Some time ago, the Prime Minister made a statement that went bananas, when all what he was saying is to encourage St. Lucia and St. Lucians to eat more of what we produce. And bananas were, he, he emphasized bananas at the time because we are exporting bananas to the UK and regionally, but then I don't think we are using our bananas in St. Lucia the way we ought to. So that is why after that statement was, was made, the uh, Anglican Church during independence took it on to organize a banana festival under the coordination of Mr. David Jordan. And they did a fantastic job in th that uh, exhibition that they produced. Uh, this, the ministry then decided to take it to the next level and we're looking at the culinary aspect of bananas. So the theme for our expo is Figla Si Sanu Tut, the culinary experience. And with me today are three young ladies who are participants at that Banana Expo 2022. I'll allow them to introduce themselves. And to my immediate right, Hello, my name is Abby Daniel. I am 19 years old. I am a culinary arts student in year two at the Safa Lewis Community College. I am the owner of Golden Treats, a very small business in Castries, St. Lucia. Beautiful. I'm Juana Octav, a member of the Jaco Valley Products um, of Fosse Jacques Souffre. I do marketing and sales and also accounting for the company. Okay, the Jacques in the house. <laughs> okay, Miriam Henville. I'm employed with the Government of St. Lucia, Ministry of Education. I'm the coordinator of the student welfare programs, which entails the book bursary program and the school feeding program. Welcome, ladies, to the program. Okay. Abby, I'll start with you uh, since you're the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> um, what had you to get into this business, this question of your little your little entrepreneur and then you you identified this as a business why and how you, you got into it well it's been my passion from a little girl um every day after school i would come home and watch my favorite television show on food network which was rachel ray okay. i loved rachel ray with my heart <laughs> she was like one of my idols All right. and growing up it's become more prominent that I would love to bake, I would love to cook, I would love to be in anything that deals with food. Oh. So food has just become one of the main things in my life. It's something that I can bring my passion out in. Oh. And I know that even if like I don't become, let's say, an executive pastry chef mm -hmm. or an executive chef in just a five-star restaurant or even in a hotel, I know that at the end of the day, that's my passion. That's what I want to do with my life. Wow. Very good. Very good. I can, I can feel the passion <laughs> emanating from you in, inward. <laughs> Tell us about you, Joanne, and your, and your, your group in, in the Jacques. Okay. We have been in existence from 2016. We deal with um, local products more fruits and we do dry seasoning also so we get to farmers 
who have um, products that are just wasting because of not going on the shelf. It has not meet the criteria to go on a shelf. So we meet with those farmers to get those fruits and we do fruit pops, we do dried herbs, um, we do tea bags also. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. an array of stuff, eh? Yes. Miriam, what from your school standpoint? Okay, from, from the school's point, we have the school feeding program, which has been in existence for over 30 years. It caters for students who are needy in terms of they are unable to pay the $1 to get the meal. And also, it serves as a convenience for some working parents who do not have the time to prepare a meal for that child. Mm -hmm. It is at 95% of the schools, the infant, primary, and, sec and um, special ed schools throughout the island. We even have two of the Seventh-day Adventist schools on board. Mm -hmm. So there's no discrimination with regards to who eats, whether it's a public school or a privately owned. Okay. There's also um, a pilot program at five secondary schools. However, other secondary schools benefit from that program. Mm -hmm. But the main aim is to try to feed the students. Right. And we encourage a lot of the local produce to be incorporated in that program. Right, right. And COVID has shown us that we have to go back to what we produce, yes, eat yes, what we grow. Yes, yes. So there ties in with what you are promoting, the figla sesano tut. Right, right, right. So we have had, for the past seven weeks, we had a Mexico FAO-sponsored training for cooks where they were taught how to use more of the local produce in the school feeding program. Mm -hmm. So cut back on the chow mein, the pasta, the flour, the rice, mm -hmm. and introduce to our students the local foods. Wow, very good, very yeah, good. It, it, the, the cooks were excited during that training. Feedback, most of them have started introducing the, the meals, the recipes that were taught. Mm -hmm. The principals are more excited and People from out of St. Lucia who have seen the photos of what was produced, they are all excited and want to come and eat on our program oh, if wow. that's how we are moving a school feeding wow, program. Wow. So Very school feeding program is making strides in the positive direction. Great, great. And we have students who are interested in participating in the Banana the Expo. Expo. Great. Mm. And you know, the thing is, I've always said that government cannot employ everybody. It's impossible. But if you have an idea, and I think that's where this government is going, is to encourage people with skills so that they can develop their skills, right? And that is why in the ministry, our tagline is to eat fresh St. Lucia's best. Um, do, you, do you think that enough St. Lucians, enough young people are gravitating in that direction? Anybody can answer? Yeah. And well, Abby? Well, in my opinion, not all. Mm -hmm. Some of them are, some of them just don't want to. Some of them, they're like, they don't care about that. They, mm. Some of them really want to, but some of them don't have the how can I say? They don't have the access mm -hmm. to the equipment they need to get to do those things. All right. Yeah. So I suppose even if government creates, but government has to come in and create, create an enabling environment in terms of, say, funding. That's another, another area I think that is required. Eh? So that's at least if you have an idea, you, can take, you should know where you can take it to and for you to develop that idea and get it funded. What do you think? Um, 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 that's... Um, what is experience with most of the young budding entrepreneurs they want to start off a, a business but since they are fresh out of school there is not that financial um, package available to them mm -hmm. is either you face the bank take a loan but how are you going to pay back if you do not have a job as yet so there should be that environment or that that grant access to tap into so you can start your business give your foot in give your first food forward so right. that you can develop and thereafter 
when the business has been established, you pick up from there. Yeah, because you need, I think you need seed money. You need, you need, you need yes. somewhere to start. Yes. Yes. And if, if I know SLDB is there, I'm hoping that the government will look into it. I think there's something called the, the blue economy. I don't know if, if the, that is an area that will cater for young entrepreneurs like you, like you who would want to get into that activity. And the other thing too, the impact it would have on our health too, because I think it's better for us to utilize what we grow. You know? And then if, that's, if that happens, then it will, our, our, uh, our food import bill be will, be, will be reduced. And that's another thing too. Because when in the ministry, we have a program, uh, which was the seven crop program, mm -hmm. and it, it worked very well. It created a dent of 30%, right, within one year. So five of, of those crops, we were able to reduce the food import bill, you know. And so I'm thinking, again, a lot of those produce, then value added can be done, you know, and to, to get to the next level. But Abby, um, what you do uh, tell us what exactly what are the, the products that you do and do you, where do you market those products? Okay, so I make cakes, whole cakes, cheesecakes, cinnamon rolls, donuts, brownies, and banana bread. Mm -hmm. um, I market those products at school, in my mother's office, in town, and also on Instagram and social me on different social medias like Instagram and WhatsApp because mm -hmm. these are the two platforms that I use. Okay. So what's about um, Jaco Valley? Okay, we have um, about 30 different flavors of fruit pop, including about five, which includes banana in it. Um, we also have the dried herbs and wet herbs. And we do chocolate, but we incorporate it in our fruit pops. Mm -hmm. And we also deal with tea bags. We have about 26 flavors of tea bags. All right. Yes. Where do you market? We market at the schools and little shops in the area. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking to go out more so with more um, advertising, marketing. Then we're looking to go on the shelves, the supermarket shelves soon. Okay. Yeah. So you love going through all the grading and the evaluation, so your labels and everything? Yes, we have labels and everything, yes. Okay. From the school standpoint, um, one of the things I'm hoping, and I told the minister this, to include a b ripe banana in the school feeding program. Are you all thinking of this? We have given thought. It has been brought up to top management. I am awaiting feedback as to when do we implement. Mm -hmm. Local food tastes so much better than imported. Mm -hmm. When you delve into a ripe banana, this is so satisfying. So we are hoping that it will be introduced, revenue permitting, finances permitting, that it will be introduced throughout the schools island-wide, and that it becomes a practice, a habit, so that the children not only eat it at, their, at that school, but it is carried into the home as well. Mm -hmm. So when the parents go shopping, the first thing they would pull up is a hand of ripe banana. So if it is instituted from the school's end, we're mm -hmm. hoping that the students will carry along and introduce it to their home. But do you think um, the parents are eating ripe bananas <laughs> at their homes? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, sh I would hope so, because it is what we grow. Mm -hmm. You walk all around St. Lucia, you drive all around, bananas catch your eye. So growing up, we used to go beneath the banana plantation and nothing tasted better than a takte banana. That's true. So if you had that experience as a child, I know you would say that I ate too much, but we have to bring it down to our children. Mm -hmm. It's not all about the grapes, the apples, the pears. We have much better quality local fresh fruits here mm -hmm. that the students need to be introduced to, the children need to be introduced to. And this would cut down on their expenses as well. You go to the supermarket now, a pear is whatever price compared to a hand of bananas. So parents now have to choose wisely. If they need our economy to grow, we have to choose local instead of foreign. You may want foreign once or twice a year or month, but at least support our local first 
to have that revenue, the finances back in our economy circulating. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. And the thing is, I, I think kids have this, this upper hand on, on, the, on the parents. When they get in the supermarket, yes. they want grapes, yes. they want apples, you know, and they will never say, no, take a banana instead. Anyway, we'll do, we'll do for a break. Stay tuned, we'll be back soon. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. I won't bite my tongue this time. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we are here talking bananas, and of course, we're talking about our ex Banana Expo 2022. The theme, Figla, as you heard the, the jingle during the break. You all are participating in the Banana Expo. Are you excited? Come on, Abby, tell me something. <laughs> what, what, are you bringing, what are you bringing to the fore? Well, like you said, everything is banana. Definitely. So for me, um, with my little experience that I got from the school, at Safa, we have the main kitchen and we have a pastry kitchen. We have two executive chefs and a pastry chef. All right. So with the experience that I've got from in the pastry with the pastry chef, um, I can put some of my experience into what I will be doing. Um, for sure, I will be making banana breads. I will be making different types of banana breads. Some will have chocolate, some will have oats, some will have raisins. I'm also making um, a banana cake, um, also a banana, a banana cream tart. Oh, whoa. Mm -hmm. so. I'm, I'm salivating already. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give out all your secrets. <laughs> Don't give out your secret. <laughs> so these are some of them. Some mm -hmm. of them that I know. Like if you if you go on Google, you'll find it. These are the easy, like these are some things that you'll find that everybody can make at home with little ingredients. Mm -hmm. Banana bread. It's you can use the you can use the ripe banana or you can use um, ripe plantain in mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So these are the some other different things. Wow. So, boy, so we're looking forward but to it. It would taste better because it's from Abby. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's golden treats, you know what I mean? It's really gold. Yeah? So, tell us about the Jacques, what you're doing. Okay, we'll be having um, banana pops. We have our famous Tambam. Tambam, boy, I love that one, boy. Tambam and really banana. That oh, yes. that's, the, that's the bomb. Just yes, me. we'll be having um, banana and raspberry pops. We'll be having banana and lime pops. We'll be having banana flour. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be getting a sample of the banana flour with fish cakes. Whoa. And we're now experimenting on banana wine. So if all goes well, we'll have that also, Whoa. the banana mm, wine. That is great. Good things Looking to come. Looking forward to it. Mm. Yes. <laughs> the schools. Well, the schools are excited. Mm -hmm. A number of schools are on board. Mm -hmm. They are scattered throughout St. Lucia. It is not concentrated in Castries, but throughout St. Lucia. 
based on the recipes which have been submitted, I cannot disclose the, the <laughs> recipes, <laughs> but it looks interesting uh -huh. and something that we St. Lucians should go out and support the schools. Mm -hmm. They are budding artists. Who knows? That might be the next, next top chef in there. That's right. But um, they need your support. We need to go out there and sample what they make, give feedback, and encourage <coughs> us encourage the schools to use the local the local produce mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but so far a number of schools i have about 20 schools primary and secondary schools on the program and they are rewarded for participating it's wow. not just coming in and exhibit but you are rewarded with tokens from the the ministry oh, wow interesting yeah. interesting there's something that is worrisome to me and in other words, what do we do and take it to the next level? There was, we had an exhibition I, I, I coordinated at um, 2019 on the playing field as World Food Day. And uh, a HES student came up with a sweet potato ice cream. Okay. Let me tell you, when I tasted this thing, I was like, wow. Heaven. <laughs> you know, and everybody kept looking at one another because, I mean, sweet potato, what's that? Sweet potato ice cream. But the next thing is, okay, where do we go with, with, that, with that, that, that ice cream? Again, they need the avenue to move from this step of creation. So if it has to be marketed, they are still at school. They are not employed. Right. What can or what assistance can they get right. to market that program? Mm -hmm. it, may be, it could be out in America or England for sale, but without the finances, and the support, they will not move forward. Maybe Expo St. Lucia can, can tap in and help them market that program. Yeah, because you, you also need to pitch up this project. thing too. Eh? Because I was thinking of taking it to a, 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 a business place, but that at the end of the day, I'm frightened that they, they, they take it, they take the, for the, days, the formula yes. for theirs. You know, so how do that child get compensated so, yeah. for such a wonderful Please. product, you know? Um, I really don't know, uh, but, but this is a, a discussion we need, we need to have to ensure mm -hmm. that, you know, to encourage peop young, young people yeah. to, yeah, to give it to the At the, the school level. level, the children are very creative, but it's sad that they do not get the avenue to further develop that product, to mm -hmm. market it, to make it on a wider scale. Mm -hmm. It is there, they try it out at school, yes, everybody sample, it's a hit, mm -hmm. but what happens, what do we do with them? Mm -hmm. These are ideas that we can use and market, which would cut down on our import bill, mm -hmm. cut down on all these foreign goods that we are bringing in. See that our students have the capacity, they have the ability, and let's nurture it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of just leaving them there at the secondary school, that's it, and what do I do with my life from then? Mm -hmm. So instead of having them go on the wrong side, they have started that product, let's continue so that we can keep them on the right track. Is it, is, is it something that the kids can take back to their community and they can continue to produce and sell within their own local? If they have the support agency, yes. Remember some students, they have family who can support them. Mm -hmm. Others, they do not have that support. So my idea, it remains there. Mm -hmm. And who and how can they move forward? We need to provide that assistance to them. Yeah. The other thing is, at the schools, one of the things I remember, um, we had a cassava um, program with them. And they had so many different oh, me yes. menus. And the sad thing, I was unable to capture that in, 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 in a, a recipe book form. I am hoping that this time around, um, in the Ministry of Education, will be able to capture the recipes coming from this expo. What, what, what are your thoughts? This we can push for, because the students and the teachers went, they did development stages to get to the end product. And it would be a shame on our part to just leave it as that. Mm -hmm. If we notice that that product is able to move forward, marketable, let's encourage them. Let's mm -hmm. encourage the child, the, the, the school, to move that product from just that, that stage on the at Constitution Park. Definitely. Let's move it forward. Right. We have a lot of experimental products 
I know it's just sitting there. Somebody from overseas or, or foreign can just come just and take, take it, and, it. Yes. and then it, it becomes theirs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it was developed here, and that person does not get to see the mm -hmm. full potential or realize the full potential. Yes. I just want to mention that the expo is going to be on the 6th of May in the Constitution Park in Castries. Uh, there are so many activities going to happen. It starts at, at 10 o'clock and it's going to end at, at um, 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, during, the, during that expo, as you, as you have heard, there will be so many derivatives from bananas, especially coming from the um, agro-processors. The number of persons are going to be there. The schools, as you hear, are going to be there. There's, a, there's going to be entertainment. There'll be banana eating competition, ripe banana eating competition. And as you could see, I have in my hand here a gentleman who somewhere in the 60s, he was able to champion the eating of a bunch of ripe bananas, and that made the Guinness Book of Records. I would love to have some more info on this gentleman. I know his name was Joshua McCombie, and uh, he was from New Village. He is in the States now. For, so those of you probably who know him and can contact him, please, I would like some contact number for him. So first to recognize this gentleman, but, but I think he puts St. Lucia on, on, the, on the map. Um, so we're hoping to have this, this competition. So we're hoping to have people who can eat the most bananas. We're hoping to see whether they can eat the most bananas within one minute, <laughs> and also the most bananas within that minute without holding the banana. Okay, and for those of you ladies with your long fingernails, we want to find out how fast you can peel a, 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 green, a green banana. It actually helps. It helps, right? <laughs> you know, so it's going to be it's going to be exciting. It's going to, I'm sure you're looking forward to it. Final words for me quickly. Um. Wait, are you looking forward to the to the yes, activity? Yes, I am. I'm looking forward to it as, because this is how I can actually push myself more That's right. and to get like more experience in like when it comes to serving and getting customer feedback, like just from yes, everybody in the public. You know, it will be a learning experience, but it will also be a social, a social experiment because me, I'm the type of person, I will not go out and sell my product, mm -hmm. more like, like be like interact with my right, customers right, right. because me, I'm a very timid person. Okay. <laughs> so, that would Adora, be... you'll get stronger when yes, you get there. Yes. Final words from you quickly. Just inviting everybody to come and sample all our banana products. Great. Well, fig glasses and tout, and it's sorted out. Vin supporter, ça qui ça no. Vin manger, vin wear, vin acheter. Bon. All right. D'accord. Fig glasses and tout. Thank you for viewing the program. I want to thank you all ladies for being here. Thank and I'm you. sure you all put your best foot forward. Yes. Thank you thank again, you. viewers. <laughs> I'm Philip Sidney say goodbye. And just remember, agriculture is our business. And eat fresh. So Lucia's best. Bye. Thank you very much. Agriculture on the move. 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 Agriculture on the move.